Hi, and welcome back to Animal Liberation TV. <clears throat> so, uh, regular viewers and those of you with a keen eye, or not even, <laughs> you don't need to have that keen an eye, will see I've got the usual background behind me. Um, now, uh, the last time I did an episode for my sofa, uh, I had a co-host, Shadow the Dog, uh, which I did an episode about free DMBR beagles, uh, called For the Love of Dog, and in that I was trying to express the emotional side of it, you know, of how can anyone treat an animal so badly, and he was about four months old at that point. He's actually here tonight, <laughs> but, um... Just as he wasn't a very go good co-host last time, <laughs> he's refusing to take part again tonight. He's some on, his union's on strike or something due to the cost of dog living or something. Um, <clears throat> no, what it is is, um, even though I'm not actually that far from Scotland really, um, it's still been a very warm day here today and he's in the hallway I think. Shadow! 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 What's this? He's refusing to take part again. I'm hoping he will come in the room or something. I mean, you won't believe the state of him. <laughs> he's uh, he's quite a big dog. Um, he's not the little puppy he was. He's a puppy, but he doesn't look like one. <laughs> he's a beast. He's a lump. Um, but <clears throat> if you do see him, then <laughs> we can show what he looks like and sort of wrap the story up properly, how I want to tell it. But regardless of that, he's a few months older now. Um, and I think this is maybe an important thing to say about having him here is that, um, I mean, he's happy, healthy, um, big, um, enjoying life. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's a lovely lad. Um, isn't it, Shadow, wherever you are? Shadow! Shadow! I know it's hot, but come and say hello to everyone. Shadow! No sign of life. I think he's just like, with the heat. Um... <clears throat> But the point is, is that the MBR Beagles, if they're shipped out at four months, like, uh, which was the age he was the last time you saw him, not that you're seeing him this time, um, but uh, <clears throat> those Beagles shipped out at those four months, they'd either not be alive by now, or this whatever it is, four months later, I think he's about eight months old or something now, um, they wouldn't be alive, or if they were, they'd be oh my god, I don't know, you know, you see it in some of the videos of the exposés I've done where there's blood and, you know, really bad faeces and uh, blood in the urine or they're being sick or they're shaking or they can't stand or they're salivating. All these different symptoms these poor dogs have to go through in the process of the toxicology test testing, which is where the MBR beagles is essentially destined for, uh, mostly at LabCorp. Um... You know, they suffer terrible poisoning. Um, you know, they're poisoned to death um, or killed um, at a certain length of time of the data gathering to show that these products are safe. So LabCorp can make lots of money by saying things are safe. Mainly fertilizers and agrochemicals, as I've said before, that we don't need on our land. We don't need that in proper um, sustainable development and growth of food for ourselves. We don't need agrochemicals. They're really bad for the water, land, air, mammals, uh, fish and birds and insects. They're terrible for all of it. And that's the stuff that's getting passed safe uh, by putting it into beagle puppies so they're poisoned. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> the injustice of it all is insane, isn't it? But the point is, Shadow's lucky, you know, because they'd already be going through those horrors. And it is important to remember what those dogs go through once they've left MBR for LabCorp or wherever they're destined to go, the poor creatures. Anyway, <clears throat> the main thing I wanted to say was tonight, what is that I can smell? What is it? I mean, some people entering this flat might <laughs> give a different answer, but... What I can smell is the sweet scent of victory. I mean, I know in the last episode I said that um, MBR will definitely close and I give it about two years maximum and anything more we do will create that sooner. Well, now <laughs> I'm really convinced of uh, uh, the fact that MBR is going to close. And this is because of some news um, that I saw on the Camp Beagle Facebook thing and also someone texted me about that. Shout out to my my man Marky Mark for keeping me updated um, so 
yeah, the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, apparently <laughs> have decided through the <laughs> lack of evidence, <coughs> excuse me, that they're not going to charge those three guys that undid themselves in for liberating the five beagles the other week. And I don't think they're charging the trespassers either. Now, I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I saw John Kurt in JC on a video from Camp Beagle, one of the live videos they put on the, the post and Facebook, uh, showing where they've cut the holes and they admitted to smashing a door in to get the beagles. So, what the fuck is going on? I told my dad uh, that they weren't, CPS weren't going to charge them. Straight away, my dad goes, oh, they don't want the publicity, do they? <laughs> and that's, I think, the conclusion that everyone <laughs> with a working mind is going to come to. I mean, surely what else is a MBR do not want to go through a trial to have to explain to a jury, a judge, the British public, whoever, what they actually do. And I said that in the last video, didn't I? That they can't even start to win the moral argument. And now we know that not only can they start, not start to win the moral argument, they're fucking scared of it. <laughs> they're really, really fucking scared of people finding out what goes on. So, um, personally, hearing that news, it's kind of a shame, isn't it? The, the lads didn't get a chance to run the trial and bring loads of publicity onto MBR and animal experiments in general, which I think they've expressed in uh, statements uh, about the CPS not charging them. So, I mean, this is one of the most incredible bits of news I think I've ever heard in the animal liberation movement. It really is that big. This is a moment. This is a moment. Why are they not charging these people? It's insane. It's insane. They've admitted they've done it. <laughs> and they, they can see how they've done it and whatever else. I'm sure they explained it. So, what the fuck is that about? That is MBR shitting themselves. Um, <clears throat> now... Uh, it's not for me to say this, but I'm speculating that there are some people in the animal rights and animal liberation movement who are now thinking, well, this is actually an open invitation to enter the premises of NBR to trespass and or to enter their premises and nick those dogs and liberate them because they won't take people to court because they're so fucking scared. I mean... You know, would they do that a second time? <laughs> you know, I mean, so uh, my thoughts are this is the time to really, as I said before, we all need to do more and all the rest of it. But this is seriously, this is the time to be thinking about, um, I'm not encouraging anything illegal, but you know, like, <laughs> you know, if people are allowed to take the dogs and they're not going to get charged, then... People should be going and trying to take those dogs. If you're not going to get trespassed because they don't want to get taken to court. Because if you're done for trespass, it's because you're on a, a lawful business or whatever. So you can turn it around on NBR and say it's not lawful actually for this reason and that reason. There's actually been a portfolio gathered of all the dodgy shit connected to that company, especially some prosecutions in Italy. So we've got a whole portfolio of evidence that anyone can use at any one time in their defence to show our dodgy MBR and turn any court case over onto MBR, which is obviously they're so shit scared about, they won't prosecute five of their dogs getting nicked and the people saying, we did it. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. <clears throat> and um, I've never heard of anything quite like it in the animal liberation movement. You know, I mean, especially in the 90s. In the 90s, I couldn't have made these videos. And in the 90s, you couldn't have nicked five dogs <laughs> and just like said you'd done it and then they'll let you go and nah. that. So times do change, times are a changing. Um this is actually incredible news. Um it's the the message is like basically saying pressure MBR, pressure, they're waving some sort of white flag. This is an early white flag. Oh no, we don't want to go to court and explain what we do. Fuck it hell. Imagine what people would actually think if they knew that we breed dogs to be poisoned and killed. We kill dogs on site. We drain their fluids. We cut up body parts for different things Ugh, on site at MBR. And then we'd send them off to lab court. Oh no, we don't want that. Little white flag. Little white flag. A first white flag. A proper white flag. That's what I'm seeing waving it oh god 
the CPS aren't charging them with it. <laughs> they admit it to stealing the dogs. This is huge. Um, so, you know, this is... <laughs> Um, I'm not encouraging it, but this is the time really to, you know, I mean, some people might say you need to, everyone, every single person needs to go over those fences or get in that compound at every single opportunity. Let's like clog up the police stations, let, let's clog up the courts, let's get the CPS to drop every single charge, because uh, MBR is scared, MBR is on the back foot, MBR is fucked. Fuck off out of the UK MBR, you're not fucking welcome, and you know it, that's why you're too fucking scared to prosecute people about taking five of your dogs, your precious fucking laboratory um, pieces of equipment as you see them, you know, fuck off, you know, truth, justice, liberation, and victory is coming. It's coming. I can smell it in the air. This is MBR's waving that first white flag. Fucking hell. Everyone should be celebrating. And everyone should be thinking, right, when am I going to take some dogs from there? When am I going to trespass in there and just stay there peacefully and protest as a trespass and, uh, you know, civil disobedience? I'm not encouraging anything lawful, unlawful. Um, because the CPS have said it's unlawful, uh, that it's lawful, haven't they? They've just said it's all right to take dogs. I mean, I'm only going by what the CPS are saying, so if they're saying it's all right, and I'm saying everyone should go and liberate every single vegan should be trying to liberate a dog going over those fences. Look, let's just, how many vegans are there in the UK? One or two million or something, I don't know. But like, let's get every single vegan going over the fences of MBR, like one every half hour for the next year. <laughs> because... The police, the Crown Prosecution Service, MBR, they're all shitting themselves, basically, because um, of what they do is so fucking dodgy and dirty and wrong, and they know it. Um, so this is incredible. <clears throat> um, another piece of incredible stuff that uh, was going on yesterday was uh, the last count that I think I saw. There were... It was the National Outreach Day for uh, Free the MBR Beagles. And I think there was something like 74 towns and cities across the UK where people were doing stalls and had placards and T-shirts and leaflets and everything. I, I, I saw a little sort of rundown. There was one from South End and Birmingham and Manchester and Newcastle and all over the place. Wow. Wow. Look. Look at what's going on. Look at what's going on. This is incredible. These are the, Everyone should be buzzing off this positivity. Come on. This is amazing. So, um, this is just really starting to gather momentum now. So, this is... Um, and what I'm going to say now is kind of briefly linked to... Uh, I, I need to do my second episode on the Animals Betrayed Coalition idea. Okay, that's going to be in the next video I do. And... I'm just qu quickly going to delve into something to do with that now. So, um, seeing is <laughs> the MBR beagles, I mean, it's far from over. It's far from over. The, the MBR acres is far from closed yet. But when I say far from closed, it's a lot nearer to being closed than it was a year ago. And even maybe a few weeks ago. <laughs> you know, fucking hell, this is serious stuff that's going on now. Um, so... Um, maybe this is the time to start speculating about what happens after. And this is where I propose this Animals Betrayed Coalition idea. Now, the Animals Betrayed Coalition idea is to have a... I'm going to explain it properly in the next video, okay? But I briefly want to cover it now, seeing as we're talking about these huge gains uh, in the Free the MBR Beagles campaign. Such massive, momentous things going on over the last few weeks. Including the outreach stuff yesterday and the... Lots of people being involved. <clears throat> um, if we close MBR acres down, six months, six weeks, maybe six weeks, six months, eighteen months, uh, uh, two years. But I give the two years maximum. I really do. But that is down to us. It is down to us. Each and every single one of us, including me. Okay, it's not just me ranting and judging people and guilt tripping people and saying you need to do more. I'm including myself. I always do. Always. But let's say we close MBR Beagles down in um, 18 months, a year. 
Right, what are we going to do after that? Well, this is what I propose about the Animals Betrayed Coalition. Not only will it help us wrap up the end of this MBR campaign and push us to the victory, potentially, but um, the, the logical campaign to follow the MBR Beagles campaign is against LabCorp. And I know people have been doing stuff against there for a year, two years, uh, maybe a bit longer, some people. Well done to those people keeping a little drip, drip, drip of like symbolic protest going and trying to keep some sort of momentum against it. Um, <clears throat> amazing. And there's been people doing a lot more the last few months against LabCorp, haven't there? Um, some really impressive little uh, demos going on. Um, so the logical progression will be to go from MBR Beagles to LabCorp. Okay, so the Animals Betray Coalition is about sort of gathering momentum in, kind of in preparation for that moment, I guess. Because don't forget that a Hunting and Research Centre, HLS, Covance, kind of now LabCorp, <coughs> was founded by the same people that founded Interfauna down the road with the Beagle Breeding Centre that's now MBR Acres. So their business is directly intertwined. So by if we close, get, get rid of MBR out of the UK, Right, they sell those premises and leave uh, breeding lab animals in the UK. Right, that's going to have a seriously big knock-on effect for LabCorp. I'm sure it already is. Lots of their research programs will have had to be altered or stopped or changed due to the MBR campaign and the Camp Beagle, like reducing the amount of beagles that are going out generally. <coughs> okay. So it's the logical step to make because they'll be damaged so much from MBR, and people are already doing LabCorp stuff. So it's the logical pro, pro, progress in my mind, okay, to go to that. Um, now, what I'm suggesting just briefly in this video, and I'm going to talk more about the Animals Betray Coalition and LabCorp idea properly in my next video upload, okay? Right, what I'm saying is those 74 towns and cities that did an MBR outreach, um, I'm suggesting, and this is sort of part of what I propose to do, is... I'm happy to help people set up uh, a first M uh, Animals Betrayed Coalition meeting in their town or city. I'll come and do a talk about Free the MBR Beagles and um, leading it on to LabCorp and the need for a coalition um, to keep us all really organised and united and strong. <coughs> and I'll show some films, uh, you know, some of my MBR Beagle films, and I'll do a talk and stuff. So that's what I propose. Um, so anyone who did stuff in their town, those 74 towns and cities, please, um, I've already got uh, people in Newcastle, Hebden Bridge, Manchester, Birmingham, uh, and a couple of other places that are sort of interested in, uh, I mean, I'm bound to get to places in London, Bristol, uh, Brighton, um, quite easily. Um, <clears throat> so... I'm already sort of gathering ideas of places I'm going to talk and show some films and then talk about uh, building this Animals Betrayed Coalition idea up and the LabCorp campaign so that when the MBR, be, when MBR close, MBR acres in whatever time, like I said, we're ready, we're already doing LabCorp stuff and then we're going to take it to the next level. Okay, and <clears throat> LabCorp, as I've said, is the key. If we close those premises down that and get the LabCorp to sell the hunting and research centre premises and the labs are stopped being used. If we do that, we're basically um, getting rid of a huge amount of vivisection. The, the knock-on effects um, would be huge on the vivisection industry in this country and the pharmaceutical um, giants, you know, would have to like, rethink how they do a lot of stuff. And we've got the power to do all of that. And we've already shown we've got the power because we're making headway against MBR acres and they are going to close so the next people after that is LabCorp so please um, book me to talk about MBR yeah so book me in uh, to do a talk and show some films and I'm going to talk all about that more in a minute anyway I managed to get Shadow onto the sofa I bribed him basically <laughs> with a treat <laughs> hey Shadow Shadow come here come here look, oh, God, look at him Oh, what a beast. <laughs> I remember when he pulled my mask off, he wants to do it again, look. <laughs> he wants to pull my mask off. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Uh -huh. So, all the poor MBR beagles that would have shipped out, been shipped out the age you saw him last time. <laughs> oh, my God. 
you, you're a naughty boy. Shut up. Stop trying to take my mask off. So they'd have all been suffering awful things, but luckily he gets a lot of love, oh. don't you? <laughs> Stop it, you beast. Right. So <clears throat> if ever there was a time to say it's time to strike, it's now. I'm not inciting anything illegal. But what I am saying is this is the time to uh, put that pressure on. MBR Acres is on its knees. <laughs> so, in the meantime, everyone, take care.